Now ServiceStack also provides support for profiling. And profiling is basically finding out what is happening inside your application, what calls are being made, and what timings are happening between those calls. And so in ServiceStack, it has the MVC Mini Profiler built in. And if you're familiar with the MVC Mini Profiler, perhaps you've heard about it used in Stack Overflow or the Stack Exchange, then you might be aware of some of its capabilities. Well, it was modified for ServiceStack slightly in order to integrate into ServiceStack, but some of the benefits of using this is that you get tuple and concurrent dictionary free even in .NET 3.0. So because the mini profiler was utilizing those changes or those equivalent namespaces and types were added to the mini profiler part of the service stack code in order to be able to use that. So you can think of that as a back port from .NET 4.0. So you'll get those features if you're even if you're in .NET 3.0. And you can see here, this is an example of what the profiler is going to output. And we'll go ahead and implement this and see how easy it is to actually get profile on our service calls in a minute here. But you can see that this gives some decent information about what's happening. You can see from our requests down, you can see all the steps that happen and how much time it took. So this can really help you to figure out what is taking a long amount of time inside of your service. It can be really hard to figure this out without using some kind of profiling technique. And the fact that this is built into service stack makes things really easy. So adding profiling to our service stack service is actually very simple. All we have to do is go into our global ASAX. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some code in the application begin request. And we're going to add an application end request method since there isn't one here already. So let's go ahead and do that. And what we're gonna do here is on the begin request, we're just gonna say if request dot is local and we're going to make sure that we're only enabling this on local requests because we don't want the profiling to be enabled if it's a remote request you definitely want to make sure you do this on your web server especially if you're going to run this in production otherwise you'll be giving out a lot of information that you might not want to be giving out about your application and then all we're going to do is just do profiler and we'll import that namespace and we'll say start and then in our end request, we're just gonna say profiler dot stop. And that's all we have to do in order to get profiling working. So now if I go ahead and run our app, and you can see here that if we do, let's say we're gonna do our status, that we have right here in this upper right-hand corner our profile results. And if I expand these, I can click on any one of these and I can see what each step is. So you can see that our first step was the actual call here. You can see the duration, the duration from the start. And then if I click this next step here, you can see that slash metadata and what the cost was there. And then we can see this status here. So when we did status, what we ended up doing was we ended up making the initial request. We deserialized the request very quickly. We executed the request filters. And you can see that executing the service is actually what took the most time. Writing the response was pretty quick. So this is a very useful tool for debugging your service. And the fact that it's built right here into the application right into this HTML rendering makes it very easy to use. You can see what the previous requests were. So we can make another request here. And then you can see that this last status request was made here and all this information about it. And you can, of course, do a share here, which will give you all of the details here in JSON that you could then send out or do whatever you want with. We've got uh, trivial, so you can show some of the trivial steps that were done here and then show timeline with children here. And so you can see even more detailed information. You can find out more about this by looking at the 
MVC mini profiler documentation. If you do a search on MVC mini profiler and you go to that site, you can find out a lot more about how this works. But here's the basic features. It's very simple to get implemented in Service Stack. And the profiling actually even gets better than what we've seen so far. So one thing you may have noticed is that our SQL query did not really get profiled. We got one profile for what happened when our service was executed. We saw how long it took, but we didn't see how long or what kind of queries were executing. This is some useful information that we may want as well. So all we have to do is where we've declared our DB connection factory, here we've done this ORM light connection factory, and this only works with ORM light, otherwise you have to instrument it yourself. What we can do here is we can go ahead and set the connection filter. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a lambda and we're just going to do X and then we're going to say new profiled DB connection. And inside here we're going to pass in X and then we're going to pass in the profiler that is currently being used. So we're going to do profiler.current. And what this is going to do is this is going to enable our DB calls, any calls that we make through this ORM to be profiled as well. It's going to have access to the profiler and it's going to put a profile entry in there. And we can, of course, put manual entries in as well if we wanted to. But let's go ahead and take a look now how this is going to affect our profile. So if we go ahead and run our app. And so now if we go to status here, you can see if we go to our last result that we have the same thing we had before, except now we have in this execute service, we have the SQL here. So you can see that it tells you how many readers, how many scalar, how many non-query statements executed, and the time it took. And if you click on this, you can actually see here how much time it took and exactly what the query was. So this is pretty neat for figuring out what's going on with your application. If you've ever tried to do this kind of profiling in a MVC application or in any web application that uses a database that uses some kind of object relational mapper, you've probably felt the pain that's involved in doing that. You have to implement a lot of this stuff yourself or painfully figure out how to use some tools that will enable you to do this. But you can see here, all we had to do was basically flip on a switch and automatically we're getting this detailed level of profiling inside of our service stack service.